Well, we are in the series that is founded in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, that says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And last week I talked about how to have a healthy soul, how to make your soul prosper. Today I want to talk about how to be in health. Well, as I started to prepare this message, I realized there is no way in the world I could present all this information in one Sunday. And I didn't think you wanted to be sitting here for three hours to hear me preach. So I'm breaking it up into three weeks just on the category of how to be in health. Today is going to be on natural health. Next Sunday is going to be on supernatural health. I'm going to talk about healing and God's healing in people in our lives, in the history, and then today. And then the week after that, I'm going to talk about emotional health because the emotional health and the physical health are interrelated. And when you talk about emotional health, you're now in the soulish realm. And that's something that has to prosper in order for us to be in physical health. So today, I'm talking about just natural health. And I'm going to bombard you with a lot of information and then hopefully come to a good conclusion. The word health, when he says be in health, is the Greek word hugiaio. And it means to be well, to be sound, to be in good health. Webster's Dictionary defines the word health as the condition of being sound in body, mind, or spirit, freedom from physical dis-ease or pain. When God created our physical bodies, we are such complicated beings. When you think of the endocrine system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the skeletal system, all the different parts that make a human body, there's so many things in play, and they're all interacted upon one another. And when they're all working in conjunction and everything is fine, we're at ease. But when something's out of kilter, we're at dis-ease. And that's where the word dis-ease comes from. Something's not working the way it should be. It's dis-eased. It's taking away the ease of making this incredible functioning organism that we are, that we live in, work perfectly and when something's out of kilter it's at dis-ease. Now God created our our existence as he wanted our minds to be at rest and our bodies to be at stress. People used to be living in a much more peaceful state and then their bodies would be working hard, and that working hard would be like that form of exercise. Adam was very, very healthy before the fall. He never worried about anything, no stress, except on his body. Well, today, it's the exact opposite. Our bodies are at rest, and our minds are at stress, and everything is upside down. Of course, that's going to cause dis-ease to our organism. You know, when the technological world came along, they kept saying, oh, it's going to make your life so much more simple. Well, it's made our bodies a lot more sedimentary, but we have more stress in the world today than we've ever had. So they lied to us with that about technology making our lives more simple. Before the flood, this human body that we live in, God created it to live forever. That's how it was intended to be. Just think, Adam, the way he ate, all he ate was what was what grew on trees. And God made those things, those different fruits, grow on trees. And when you eat from trees, you're standing up and you're just picking like this. And your hands are like raised up to God, praising God, eating fruit. Can you imagine what an apple must have tasted like in the Garden of Eden? A peach? A plum? All these incredible vitamins and nutrients, what that must have been like. And when the, before the flood, the firmament was still, this band of water was still surrounding the globe, and it trapped all the supercharged oxygen on the planet. So Adam lived like in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. 
you know, a lot of people go and sit in these things for like an hour at a time, and it costs, it's pretty expensive. I've looked into it. But they're, all they're doing is just trying to get every cell in the body oxygenated like Adam did every day on a normal basis. He'd wake up in the morning and go, and he'd almost like get high. He was so supercharged with oxygen. And that's what the world was like. That firmament kept the ultraviolet lights from the sun from coming in and affecting. Nobody couldn't get a suntan. Adam and Eve walked around naked, and they had no, no uh, uh, sun blocker because the firmament protected them. They didn't get sunburned. But then the flood came. And when the flood came, the firmament came down. The fissures of the earth came forward. The earth filled with water. And when it subsided, we ended up with the world we have today. That's why people can now get sunburned. And all that oxygen, there's still oxygen on the earth, but it's leaving. And even after the flood, originally God wanted man to live forever. But after the flood, people lived to be in their 900s. Adam lived to be 930 years old. The oldest man who ever lived was Methuselah. He lived to be 969 years. And you say, oh, come on, you really believe that? Yeah, because it's in the book. I believe it. You know, when God told Adam, the day you eat of that fruit... Just think, all this mess started over something to eat. So be careful about what you eat. It might mean something to you. You might pay their consequences for it later. But when God told Adam, the day you eat of that tree, you can eat any tree you want. There was all kinds of trees in that garden. But the day you eat of that one, you're going to die. Adam ate of it. Eve ate of it. They didn't die. Is God lying? No. Peter tells us, that a day with the Lord is the same as a thousand years, and a thousand years, the same as a day. No human being has ever lived to be a thousand years old. Methuselah came pretty close at 969, but in the millennial reign, everybody lives one day, a thousand years. Now, after the flood, man's life expectancy started to dwindle from 900 to 500 now, in the book of Psalms, chapter 90 and verse 10, it says, The days of our years are three score years and ten. Now, a score is 20. How much is three times 20? 60. Plus 10, 70. So, on average, people live to be 70 years old. And if by reason of strength, they be four score, what's four times 20? 80. So, on average, people now live to be 70 to 80 years old. Some longer, many much shorter than that. But it's a long ways from 969 years. And it's all because for 6,000 years, the earth has been depleted. Now science will tell us, some scientists will tell us, that, oh, the earth is evolving, we're getting better. Yeah, I don't see it. No, the earth has lost all that extra oxygen, and where we do get oxygen is when we breathe carbon dioxide and the plants absorb that and expel oxygen. All that is changing. And it says, after we get, if you're, if you're by strength, you live four score, it says, then there's strength and labor. Adam, like I said, he just reached up, and, hey, there's a plum tree. I'm going to get a plum for breakfast. Oh, I'm going to go get some bananas. And that's all he had to do. But after the, the fall, the first, one of the first things that God told Adam is you're going to make a living by the sweat of your brow. Now, I say this jokingly, but I think there's some truth to it. That's why people don't like to eat their vegetables, because vegetables grow in the ground. You've got to bend over. That hurts your back by the sweat of your brow. And you got to plant those things. And you got to dig them up and wash off those rutabagas and eat them. And, you know, your broccoli. And wouldn't you rather have a peach than broccoli? I know I would. But by the sweat of your brow, that's how you're going to live. He says, and then soon you're cut off. 80 years compared to 969, that's a blip. 
He says, and then we fly away. The body falls on the ground and we fly away. And when you fly away, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, God has laws for everything that he does in life. In 1 Corinthians 14.40, he says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Everything in this physical universe has laws, the laws of physics, the laws of math, all these laws that make planets spin at perfect timing, and, and just everything that he does is decently and in order. The way God made us individually, in Psalm 139, 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. God made our physical bodies that we live in. Remember, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Your body is your earthly vehicle. That's what we live in. And he made it perfect. His ways are marvelous. David said in another psalm, he says, You knit me together in my mother's womb. It was just miraculous the way he did it. But in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also he reap. And whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Nobody in history has ever sowed tomato seeds and grown watermelons. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. And if you smoke for 40, 50, 60 years, don't be surprised if you reap lung cancer. If you drink alcohol for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, don't be surprised if you get cirrhosis of the liver. And if you live on nothing but junk food for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, don't be surprised if you have a heart attack. What you sow, you're going to reap. One of the laws of physics, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Now, I tried and I prayed, Lord, how can I say this in a much more comforting way? But um, I just got to say it the way it is. We're all going to die. I know that's not a surprise to you. You don't want to hear it. But that's the facts. Because after Adam and Eve, what happened in the garden, we're all going to they're they're all gone. You can't talk to Methuselah. You can't talk to Adam. They died. And we're all going to die someday. In 2 Corinthians 4.16, it says, For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our outward man, this physical body, from the day we're born, the clock's ticking. And we reach our peak, some say 30 some say maybe 25. Um, but then, you know, like you'll say, get to the hill and then it's downhill from there. But that's just, that's nature. That's the way things took over after the fall. But the inward us, the real us, can get better. I, when I look in the mirror, I just say, who in the world is that old man? Because in my brain, I remember what I looked like when I was 18. And that's what I want to be like again. And I will be even better than that someday. But I can say, inside the real me, I'm a much better person than I was when I was 18. The inward man's getting better day by day if you're walking with the Lord and doing things his way. But the outward man, I love Jesus and I'm trying to be more and more like him, but my body just seems to be going the other direction. It's just the way life is. In Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after the, this, the judgment, I believe, this is my personal belief, does anybody here remember the day you were sitting in heaven with the Lord and, and you said, like I said, oh Lord, uh, I want to be born in Detroit, Michigan, in Sarasota Hospital through... Uh, Violet Colabar and Robert Ryan on April 24th, 1954. That's when I decided I don't remember doing that. I had no say-so in the day I was going to be born or where, what time in history, or who my parents were going to be. And it's the same thing. We have no say-so when we're going to leave the planet Earth. Just as we have an appointment to be here, and it was God's idea 
God knows when he puts us here on the planet Earth when he's taking us out. It's like a manager in a baseball game. He knows what inning he's putting that pitcher in, and he knows what inning he's taking that pitcher out. And, we're, and life is the same way. In Psalm 116 and verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now that doesn't make sense. God's happy when we die? Well, he didn't say he's happy because he didn't want us to die. He made us to physically live forever. But the reason it's precious is because those who are trusting in him, when he takes us out of this world, out of this body, we're no longer trapped in a body of sin that's decaying. The corruption puts on incorruption. The mortal puts on immortality. And then we can have a soul inside that loves Jesus, that's getting better, put in a brand new body, one that's never going to get old. It's never going to hurt. It's never going to lose its capabilities to do all that we can do. And in Psalm 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So when we step out of this body, we go into a place called the valley of the shadow of death. And I've talked to people who've been there, and I've listened to reports and read books about people who have been there. And when you step out of your body, every single one of them, when they stepped out of their body, it didn't hurt. It was such a trauma that God puts this thing in our brain that our brains forget. We don't, we don't know it. We can't feel it. We step out of our body, and there's no pain. That's the valley of the shadow of death. And then we go one of three places. We either go back to earth into that same body. We go absent from the body's present with the Lord. Or if you don't know Jesus, you go to another place separated from Jesus. But it's going to happen to all of us. Now, just so that you know, I don't want anyone here. Nobody else is going to die. We've lost too many people in this church. We're all going out of here in the rapture on the buddy plan, okay? That's what I'm signing up for. No more death. Now, having said all that, we have choices in life. Because remember, what you sow, you're going to reap. We have choices. There's the things that we put in our body, food and water, food and beverages. We have choices that we can make. Now, in the garden, that water that Adam drank was crystal clear. It was so perfect. It was so hydrating and refreshing to his body. But nowadays, you either drink well water that can have calcium, iron, arsenic in it. You've got to have a good filtration system. Or you can drink city water that has fluoride in it. All the water's been fluorinated, which weakens the bones and actually, some say, actually causes more of a subdued um, emotion over a long period of time. Or you can drink bottled water. Well, I was listening to this one nutritionist that said bottled water, whether it's distilled or purified, is put in plastic bottles. Have you noticed the plastic bottles, whoop, I just did it now, are getting thinner and thinner because it's cheaper for them to make. But the problem is this plastic is emitting PPBs. And what it does, it does a number of things. But one of the things it does is it releases estrogen into that water. Now men need more testosterone in their body than estrogen. And when you're drinking this water, I just drink some estrogen. I need water to drink. I don't have that beautiful water that Adam had, so I can either drink fluorinated water from the city or well water and hopefully get it purified. But when you drink this, it's adding estrogen. That's why men, and we can't blame it all on this, but so many men are overweight because estrogen makes a man gain weight. Women need estrogen in their body, but when they have over estro a too high of an estrogen level, it can cause all kinds of problems. It can prolong menopause. It can do all kinds of things. Now, the food that we eat, 
We've come a long way from the Garden of Eden. There's certain companies that are tampering with food. There's something called GMOs, genetically modified organisms. And what they do is they take food, naturally grown food, and they molecularly change it around. Did you know that there's a tomato that actually has mouse DNA in it? Now it looks like a tomato, smells like a tomato, tastes like a tomato, but it has zero nutritional value. You can actually throw it against the wall and it won't break because it has mouse DNA in it. But it grows so much faster, so much easier, and they can make more money. You know, everyone says, ah, oh, eat fish. Fish is healthy for you. And if you notice, there's one type of fish. Well, a lot of times they say don't eat certain fish because it came from water that's polluted and contaminated. But there's one kind of fish that whenever me and Bobette go looking for, I like frozen fish. I like cod and flounder. But we, we can't find it, but they're always pushing this tilapia. Did you know there is no such thing as a tilapia fish? You know where tilapia comes from? Tilapia is cod. They have these big fish hatcheries. Many years ago, do you remember a rock band called Jethro Tull? Yep. The lead singer's name was Ian Anderson. And sometime, if you want, I'll tell you the story. I picked him up hitchhiking once and drove him from Detroit out to uh, uh, Milford. Interesting guy. But Ian Anderson is now one of the wealthiest people in England because he invested all of his money from his rock and roll days into fish hatcheries. And they, they, they make all the, or they make, they produce and populate all these cod and then they take the female cod and they take some part of it out and put in something else and it becomes a tilapia fish. And tilapia is the only kind of fish that you can eat that's actually bad for your cholesterol level. Monsanto, a corporation, owns the patent to soybeans. How can anybody own food? But they do. There are certain farmers in America that have tried to grow their own soybeans from high, the non-hybrid seeds from last year's crop and not buy their seeds from Monsanto and they have been fined some of them up to $40,000. Some farmers have lost their farms and some farmers have been put in jail because they won't buy their soybeans seeds from Monsanto. Well, soybeans, oh, it's a good source of protein. They don't want us to eat meat anymore. They want us to eat tofu. Well, soybeans, guess what? is nothing but estrogen. And again, men eating estrogen, that's why they say if you live long enough, every man in America will have prostate cancer from the estrogen that's in the, the dairy and from the estrogen that's in soy food. And some people have even said soy and that estrogen in that produces, it makes the frontal lobe shrink and it causes dementia. But our buddy, he just loves us so much. He's always looking out for us. Good old Bill Gates. That He's buying so much uh, farmland around the world, and he, he wants to just grow soybeans from Monsanto, and he's going to make these little protein plant packs. And he says, don't worry. You don't have to worry about going hungry. I'm going to make everyone in America one of these protein packs, and you just eat one of those, and it'll keep you healthy. It's going to have estrogen in it. It's going to have soybean in it, and the new thing now is to eat bugs. They want you to eat crickets. Well, I say you go eat crickets. I'm eating me a hamburger. But hamburger, talk about hamburger, what Bill Gates is doing with all these farms that he's buying is... He's injecting vaccines into them because a lot of people don't want to get the shot. So he's putting RNA vaccines into the livestock so they'll eat it. He'll get it in us one way or the other. Now, another way we can get food is through the fast food industry. And it's called fast food because it will kill you faster than anything else. <laughs> And, and I am, I have to, you got to pray for me, I'm an addict of it. 
But one good thing that came out of COVID is I don't eat fast food hardly ever anymore because I used to eat it every day at work. I'm surrounded by fast food plants. But guess what? Fast foods isn't fast anymore, and it sure isn't cheap. It's cheaper for me to just bring something home from, or from home and to eat at work. But fast food, if you want to ever see a video called Food Incorporated, they show how so many farmers around the world, they grow their potatoes, french fries, they raise their beef, hamburgers, they raise their dairy cow, cheese, all to the specifications of the fast food industry because they buy more of their product than anyone else. And the way that they produce it is all geared towards the fast food industry. They don't grow it and raise animals the way they used to. I have a friend that used to be a manager of a Taco Bell. And if you know me, I used to eat Taco Bell all the time. I don't even like it anymore. Yeah. Did you hear that? Miracles do happen. Somebody told me, or this friend of mine told me, she was a manager of a Taco Bell. And when they get their beef that comes in from the, the main headquarters, it comes in these big giant plastic bags. Plastic bags emitting PPBs estrogen and she opened this bag and there was worms in it so she called the headquarters and said I can't serve this beef this beef that was sent in it had earthworms in it and the owner just laughed and says don't worry about it it'll disappear and it'll blend in when you cook it down and she said well I don't want to serve earthworms and they said it's in all of our beef they just didn't grind these up fine enough and in this documentary called Food Incorporated there's three major farms in America that grows earthworms. And you know what they grow them for? They grow them for the fast food industry because earthworms are nothing but protein. And they grind them up. It's a very cheap filler. And when you read anything that says animal byproduct, it's earthworms. And they mix it in there. So when you get a hamburger, mm, boy, that's good. Yeah, how do you like your worms? You like them medium or well done? The dairy industry, my brother-in-law used to own a dairy farm and he raised his cattle through something called Australian rotation grazing. Very healthy beef, very healthy milk. But guess what? Nobody would buy his milk because it didn't have enough butter fat in it. So he finally had to get to the point where he fed his dairy cows this grain that had estrogen in it to increase the butter fat count so that then they could sell it. So when you drink milk, the worst thing a man should do, and here I am, I'm guilty as charged, ice cream, cheese, milk. It has estrogen in it. And it's all coming from the dairy cows that demand a certain amount of butter fat in it. Now, I'm gonna tell you about an addictive drug it grows in the field and it comes in the form of a cane. It looks like a cane. And they take it down and they process it and refine it and it turns into this white crystallized powder. It's called sugar. And it's a drug. There's another plant that grows in the field and it's a pretty little poppy plant. And they take that and they process it and they make it in different forms and it will either make opiates for drug or for pain killing drugs or it'll make heroin but they're both plants growing in the field that man has processed and they're both drugs i would uh, I, I used to do drugs i did a lot of drugs but i would i would say my testimony in court would be sugar is more addictive than heroin but you know what? They will both kill you. Cancer cells live on sugar. Amen. We're talking about in the molecular stage of our bodies. When a cancer cell sees sugar, it goes, mm, boy, there's my favorite thing. And it eats it and it gets stronger and it grows bigger and stronger. The more sugar, the more that cancer cell grows. Vitamin C, just to let you know, in the molecular stage, looks identical to a sugar molecule. 
So the cancer cell says, mm, boy, sugar, and it eats that vitamin C, and you know what happens? It turns into hydrogen peroxide, and it kills the cancer cells. So the moral of the story is don't eat sugar, take vitamin C, and you won't get cancer. Now, sugar, I remember one time I said, I'm going to go a whole week without eating no sugar. Sugar's in everything. I sometimes think it's in the air. It's everywhere. But we got choices, what we can do. Now, I'm going to talk about two other categories that start with the letter V, vaccines and vitamins. To vac vaccinate or not, God created our bodies so that everything that comes into our body comes through one of three filtration systems your nose, your mouth, or your eyes. And if anything comes in that way, God designed a way to filter it. If something comes in any other way, it's not filtered. Did you ever wonder why so many people nowadays have peanut allergies, especially kids? I remember when I was in, in uh, uh, kindergarten, whenever we had to take our quiet time, I hated quiet time, you have to take your quiet time, and Mrs. Kaufman was our Sunday or our uh, um, kindergarten teacher. She would slice an apple in half and put a big smear of peanut butter on it, and everybody in class ate it. And nobody said, "Oh, Miss Kaufman, I can't. I'm have a peanut allergy." Nobody did. Why do so many kids have that now? Because almost all the vaccines that children have introduced into their body, and if you get your child vaccinated with everything they want, there's 35 vaccinations they'll have before the age of 12. My, my most favorite, my most interesting one to me is um, hepatitis B that they give you to children when they're first born. The only way you can get hepatitis B is through intravenous drug use or sexually transmitted. And that vaccine only lasts for five years. So you're saying that my child, by the time of five years old, is either gonna be sexually active or be a heroin addict. <laughs> but you gotta have it. But all these vaccines, they float them in peanut oil. And when that peanut oil, it doesn't go through your eye, it doesn't go through your nose, and it doesn't go through your mouth. They shoot it either in your vein or your muscle, and it bypasses God's natural filtration system, and all of a sudden the body goes into like a shock. Peanuts coming in my body some foreign way? And that's why if you eat peanuts, you can get anaphylactic shock. You can stop breathing because your body has no way to filter that. Um... The polio vaccine, I remember when I was a kid, we all had to line up down the halls at the elementary school. And some kids were scared to death, some were crying, and we all got that little dent in our arm, remember? They'd shoot you with that. Now, vaccines have probably saved lives. I'm sure it has. And vaccines have probably helped a lot of people. But I'll talk about in a minute how vaccines are done, are made compared to how they are today. But when Jonas Salk made the polio vaccine, polio was out of control. And they had to do something. But there was this biologist, and I, I apologize, I can't remember her name and I couldn't find it. But she said, this one, yes, we need a polio vaccine, but not the one by Jonas Salk, because it's going to have a long-term effect. Do you ever wonder why so many people, baby boom generation, coming down with dementia and Alzheimer's? because that's one of the results she said would happen, that the polio vaccine would lay latent in our cells and later in life would affect the nervous system, destroy the sheath around the, like you know how electrical wires have plastic around them? Our nerve system have a sheath. It would destroy that and it would destroy, one of the things that would happen is dementia. And um, they, did the vaccine by Jonas Salk anyhow, and that biologist just mysteriously died one day. Coincidence, of course. But vaccines, whether they're good for you or bad for you, they were different than how vaccines are made today. The famous one, 
that we're all being faced with, the COVID-19 vaccine. It's not a vaccine. Because this is how a vaccine is made. If they want to give you the flu vaccine, they take influenza A or B or whatever it is, and they inject it in a horse, a pig, or a monkey. When that animal creates an antibody to fight that, they, they take that out, take it in the lab, and they make a, a vaccine around that antibody. But COVID-19, they didn't inject COVID-19 into a horse, pig, or a monkey. They l manufactured it in a laboratory. And there's a lot, I could talk for 10 hours on this, but they took this and they wrapped it in RNA technology. And RNA won't, it won't take the place of your DNA, but it comes alongside it. And it's totally different. That's why there's so many people having side effects to this. And the number one one is you get the shot and next thing you do, you come down with shingles. Or there's a movie out there called Died Suddenly. Just go home and Google Died Suddenly. See how many obituaries have that term. All these people, healthy athletes, dying on the field, they just died suddenly. Every single one of them, Monsanto, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer, created their vaccine this way. It's not a vaccine. Now, vaccines, polio, smallpox, all these. I remember when I was a kid, I got cut a lot because I used to do a lot of crazy things. And the doctor said, oh, you got to get your tetanus shot or you're going to get lockjaw. In your whole life, did you ever meet anyone or hear about anyone having lockjaw? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. But those were at least vaccines that were made the proper way. What they're doing now it's not vaccines. They have no right to call it that. But our buddies Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab, they want to take care of us. And they want to get these in us one way or the other. Now there's vaccines and then there's vitamins. Should we take vitamins? Should we take supplements? And I've only got one word for that. Yes. If you don't, you're crazy. Because when Adam bit into that apple, or he bit into that banana, or he bit into that peach or that plum, there was so many vitamins and nutrients in that, but it ain't that way no more. No more at all. So you need these vitamins and nutrients. Now, I was told this example once, and I thought it was a good uh, word picture. So I'll just imagine if I told you the church, every seed in the church, was filled with people. But they're all living people. Am I lying? The church is filled with living people. But what if I said every seed in the church today was filled with people, but they're all cadavers, they're dead. They're still people, they just happen to be dead. Or what if I said every, church, every seed in the church is filled with people, but they're all mannequins. They're still people, but they're mannequins. And the reason I'm saying that is there's three types of vitamins. Some of them are living, and they give you all the vitamins and nutrients that you need. If you don't believe me, talk to Carol sometime. She worked in a vitamin factory. What vitamins, when they go through your pores, will do. Nobody wanted to go to work on the day they were making laxatives. <laughs> vitamins do something for you. But some vitamin companies have vitamins but they're, they're dead, they, the way they process them. They don't have anywhere near the, the bang for the buck. And some companies make vitamins and, and supplements that are just like mannequins. Now, this is kind of gross, but it gets the point across. The companies that rent out porta potties, when they rinse those out and clean them out for the next job they're going to send them out to, I didn't know this, but porta potties in the bottom, they have a little trap to catch all the solids. Sorry to be so graphic, but they catch the solids. Every single one of them, those traps are filled with little pellets. And you know what they are? They're the vitamins of people that took, that are like the mannequins. They come in and they go out and they do nothing for your body. So eat vitamins and supplements, but make sure they got some life in them. Now there's other brands out there and I don't know all of them. The only one I know of, and I'm not a distributor, so I'm not trying to get money out of this. But Shackley has the most living 
alive vitamins and supplements that I know of. There's other companies out there. I'm not saying they're the only ones. They're the only ones that I can swear to. And as a matter of fact, the government, the FDA, is trying to get a law passed that you can't go to the health food store and buy supplements anymore unless you have a prescription from your doctor. Well, guess which ones they're going to write a script for. But the only company that they won't be able to shut down is Shackley because their vitamins don't come like the other ones. They're made 100% from food. Me and Bobette, we went to visit my mom one time in Florida, and right around the corner was this health food store. And we didn't see it, but we heard it. We saw it on the news. We couldn't believe all these BATF agents surrounding the health food store, all dressed in black with AK-47s charging the building because they were selling this one kind of vitamin that they didn't want people to have anymore. So, all right. Now, what about the food we're supposed to eat? I told you how they're playing with things with GMOs. Organic versus processed. Organic means no pesticides grown and healthy as possible. Um, your, your vegetables are grown in or, organic health with no pesticides. Your um, animals are raised free range, grass fed beef. The chickens are not grown in those little cages. My brother-in-law used to be the head of the Department of Agriculture in the Thumb, and he said he'd go into these uh, chicken farms and they have all these little chickens in these little cages they put them in as chicks and they feed them all this um, food that's just loaded with estrogen because what people most want is breasts and and wings and legs so they would just feed these things until the chickens grew so big they were bursting through the cage but they were grotesque they weren't even a normal looking chicken because their breasts were so big their wings were so big and their legs were so big and then they would kill them and start all over again but organic they don't do anything let the chickens roam outside and, and live naturally but organic is very expensive it's not easy to find and um, I'm not going to say but there's a very well-known popular store in our area grocery store when it's marked organic doesn't always necessarily mean it's organic but or if you can eat organic eat grass-fed beef eat free-range chickens the rule of thumb if God made it eat it if man made it don't eat it and God never made anything in a cardboard box or a plastic bag and when you go into a grocery store you notice something you walk in the grocery store all the produce is on this side all the bread and the dairy is on this side and everything else is in the middle they do that on purpose because they know people want fruits and vegetables they want dairy and bread so you have to go on one end to the other you got to go through all this this land of processed food and like I talked about processed sugar it's in everything that's processed now the other thing that you hear today is so many people are gluten-free and the reason that is is because their bodies just can't contain or maintain or function with wheat well why is that Jesus ate bread and bread used to be called the staff of life. Well, that's because the way that they grow wheat today, it's not the way it was back in biblical times. There's pictures of farmers standing in their wheat field like 80, 100 years ago, and they're standing there and the wheat's up to their shoulder. If you look at a farmer standing in his wheat field today when it's ready to be harvested, it's about up to his knees. The wheat that's grown today is not the wheat that Jesus ate. It's different, and it will do different things to your body. Some people can handle that. Some people can't. Some people are allergic to that wheat and don't even know it. And they, people say, well, I'm going to eat rice. I have a friend of mine is a, is gluten-free but eats all kinds of rice cakes and rice flour and all that. Did you know that 95% of the rice that's grown in this country is grown in the same states that used to grow cotton 
Well, all the cotton, or I shouldn't say all, but the vast majority of the cotton that we use and the cotton for around the world is grown in India. So those states that used to grow cotton, you know what they do now? They grow rice. But the trouble is, did you ever hear of a boll weevil? Boll weevils will destroy your cotton crop. So what the farmers would do is saturate the ground with pesticides so that it would kill the boll weevils before it could then affect the cotton. And you don't eat cotton, so who cares? They would pick all that cotton, it would grow like crazy. Well, now they don't grow cotton there, they grow rice, but all that pesticide is built up through the years and that ground is filled with pesticides. So when you grow rice, you're eating that pesticide. The only company I know of in the United States that has rice that has not been grown in that is Lundberg Rice because it's grown in California and they never grew cotton in California. Processed flour just comes from the wheat. It's just that little short crop now. And if you're going to eat flour, you remember when we were kids, Wonder Bread, build strong bodies, 12 ways. Oh yeah, prove it. <laughs> When I was a kid, I remember getting Wonder Bread, smearing butter on it, sprinkling the whole thing with sugar and rolling it up and eating it. Boy, oh, that was good for you. It made me the man I am today. <laughs> like the old saying, the whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. So if you can eat bread and you can eat wheat, at least eat the whole grain stuff or the mixed grain stuff. Stay away from that white processed stuff. And then I don't have to talk very much about this. We all know we shouldn't be ingesting alcohol. Well, Jesus drank wine. Well, if you got a couple hours, I'll tell you what kind of wine I think Jesus drank. But people say, yeah, but the resveratrol in the, in the wine is good for your heart. Yeah, eat grapes. It's got the same amount of resveratrol, and it hasn't been processed down, and it'll do the same thing for your heart. And any kind of, you get wine from grapes. You get beer from hops and grains. You get whiskey um, and bourbon from rye and wheat. And then you get vodka from potatoes. And what they do is they process that and distill it. And when those things start to ferment, that fermenting process is the rotting process. And they control it to a certain, amount, a certain point. And you know when you look at a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of rum or something, it's got a proof on it. 60 proof, 80 proof, 100 proof, 150 proof. That means how much toxicity they left in that. You know why somebody gets drunk? Because you've killed brain cells. And when someone's staggering around, oh, look at that drunk. Oh, isn't that funny drunk? You're looking at a man that just destroyed brain cells. And every cell in your body is replaced every seven years except for brain cells. And when you drink alcohol... What that does, it's destroying your brain cells. It's also destroying your liver. And you know what? I have never once in my whole life ever met anyone where alcohol did them good, where they wouldn't have been better off without it. Anybody here ever been raised by a drunken parent or have a drunken relative? Drugs, we don't need to go there. Um, I'll just say briefly the whole marijuana thing. Yeah, but it's legal now. Well, so is prostitution. So should I go get a hooker? It's, pro it's, it's legal. But the whole marijuana thing, the marijuana plant, do you know in the original constitution of the 13 original states, they had mandatory that every farmer grew a certain amount of marijuana because the hemp plant is great for, they make clothes out of it, Hemp rope is the strongest there is. They even made parchment out of it. They used to write out of it. And hemp oil is very healing for you. But some people are going to disagree with me, but I've got a couple hours, I'll sit down and talk to you. But the THC part of the marijuana plant is the part that gets you high. And what it does, the reason you get high is when that THC comes into your, your bloodstream, your white blood cells says foreign substance, and they emit a chemical to destroy that, and that chemical gives you a euphoric feeling. And if you keep doing that, it, that's why it takes more and more pot to get you high, because your white blood cells are getting tired, and after you do that for a while, well, it destroys your white blood cells, and you can't fight off infection. 
If you smoke a lot of pot, guys, sorry. It's a form of estrogen that turns into your body. That's why men who smoke a lot of pot, they grow breasts. And then the other thing, we all joke about it, but this term came about in the 70s. When you smoke a lot of pot, you get the munchies. And when you get the munchies, you don't want to eat broccoli and asparagus. You want to eat cheese whiz out of a can. So, and then tobacco. Tobacco is a plant that grows in the field, and we shouldn't chew it, sniff it, snort it, smoke it, inject it. It's not good for you. And I watched my grandmother die of lung cancer. It's not pretty. I watched as they pulled, siphoned her lungs and this black tar substance came out of. I helped my mom after her, her lung cancer and they gave her chemo and radiation. I picked up my mother, who was like a skeleton, and I put her in bed because she couldn't walk anymore and lost all her hair. And then it later turned into a brain tumor the size of an orange. These are things we don't need. These are things that are not good for us. All right, now, I got you totally depressed and wondering, like, what in the world can I do? I can't drink water. And I didn't even talk to you about the air, the kind of air we breathe compared to Adam. So what do we all do? Live in the mountains and breathe in Switzerland? And I didn't talk about chemtrails, and I didn't talk about all these other things and pollution and living next to factories. And So what are we supposed to do? First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 talks about something else. And I'm just going to touch real briefly. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. When I first became a Christian, I was an exercise maniac. It's hard to believe now, but I was. I was in excellent shape. I used to think I was Superman. I could do anything. But this person who led me to the Lord showed me this scripture and made me think. And he used to tell me, all that time you're spending at the gym, all that time you're spending out there running or boxing in the ring, that's leaning on the flesh. That's depending on the arm of the flesh. That You're being carnal. God doesn't want that. So I stopped exercising. And here I am today. <laughs> After 47 years of church functions and potlucks and uh, afterglows and stop exercising, here I am today. Well, God's telling us bodily exercise does profit, but in comparison to spiritual exercise and spiritual growth, it pales in, in comparison. But we should exercise. Remember, God made us so our minds are at rest, our body is at stress. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So what are we supposed to do? With everything that I told you, eat as good as you can. If you can eat, afford organic and you can find it, eat organic. Get your, your fish, your meat, and then your veggies and your fruit and eat a balanced diet. Eat as good as you can. If you can't, then get, if you can't afford organic, then get frozen. Do everything you can to try to not eat anything in a can. And I'm not going to talk about when we start thinking about survivalist mentality where everything's in cans and boxes. That's, a, that's another story for another day. But eat the best you can. And then what do we do about exercise? And let's be honest, we're not as young as we used to be. The best cardio exercise there is, is to walk. Just walk every day. And the best strength exercise there is, just one thing. Now I used to lift weights for hours. I don't have time for that, plus I can't do it like I used to. But the best strength exercise there is, is to do push-ups. And if you can't do push-ups, do girl push-ups on your knees. But just that movement, that's upper body strength. If you eat the best you can, and you walk, and you do push-ups, that's living a life of moderation. Now remember, I'm just giving you natural information now. 
Next week, I'm going to talk about supernatural health, what God has to say and how he comes into all this to make us have the health to get us through. And then in conclusion, two things. Burn more calories than you take in. And if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, but it hurts when I go like this. I know, but it'll hurt even more if you don't, because then you won't even be able to go like this. Keep fighting the good fight and just do the best you can as well as you can. And with God's help, he's going to see us through. So when our appointed time is here, because we're all here, we have an appointed time to leave. I'm praying for the rapture. But if I die a natural death, I want to get there as healthy as I can. But everything in this world is going against us because the social engineers want to control us and they want us dead. They don't like us. So do your best, pray that it's blessed, and Jesus will take care of the rest. Amen. Now, remember I said the fall and everything started just because one guy ate something he shouldn't have? And remember when um, um, Jacob and Esau, and Esau lost his birthright over something he ate? Well, Jesus, when he left... He instituted, um, for lack of a better term, not a, not a ritual, but an ordinance. It's called communion, something to eat. And this is something that he wants us to eat. And he said, eat of this bread, it's my body. Drink of this cup, it's my blood. So we're now going to have communion. And I'm going to ask Gary, Rick, Steve, and Ken, if you would go back and prepare and we're going to have communion, and we're going to pray, Lord, help us. We need your help in this crazy world.